<laughs> Hi, everybody. I'm here with my favorite organic nut, Marvin. Hello, Marvin. Uh, yes, we're back <laughs> right before the new year. Yes, and that's why we decided to do this video for the viewers today. And we are going to go over two of the hottest button topics of all, because I did a poll not long ago, and about 45% of these particular comments said that there were two topics. Number one was, I am not getting enough contact in a relationship. And number two was, I have attracted a third party. So for today, we're going to go through what you can do and how you can maneuver this, but it's going to be where you look at you. You look at the outside and you go, okay, if that's in front of me, what have I got going on that I need to change, fix, correct, let go of, change my beliefs about? So what are your thoughts, Marvin? On number one, attracting more contact and not getting enough contact from someone that you admire, love, want to be with. So I would say my thoughts on contact is I think a big mistake a lot of people are making personally, and I know you people will probably heard YouTubers out there say things along the lines of um, you should never mess with the middle, blah, blah, blah. But me personally, there are no rules in this in this manifesting game. You know, there are simply methods and ways and each individual chooses what methods and ways works for them. And so I firmly believe with, you know, you can mess with the middle. And I think a lot of people don't get contact because they're trying to go straight to the end of a scene that they don't believe. Mm. And I think the, 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 the gap, you always talk about the bridge of incidents. Well, the bridge of incidents is longer than the London Bridge compared to what people's <laughs> beliefs are. You see what I'm saying? Like people's beliefs, like the London Bridge is this long and people's beliefs are even further apart than what their desires are. So they don't really don't believe it. So my thing mm. is, is if you want to collapse time and space with the contact that you receive from a person, I personally don't believe in going to the end of a scene. So if you're trying to get back, so for instance, if somebody's trying to manifest a specific person back, right? They're going straight to the end scene, like Neville would say, or other, other people on YouTube would say, not named on yes and Marvin. Um, they're going straight to the end of a yeah. scene, them like being married to their person or um, feeling like a wedding ring or hearing their person tell them something like, I love you, when you might have just went through a situation and there's no way possible that um, they're going to tell you that they love you because you just might have went through a, a serious situation. So it's not really in the realm of possibility now can it happen absolutely will it happen most likely no it won't happen and i think a lot of people they hear videos and they hear neville and they think oh i have to do it this way but manifesting in my opinion is not as easy it's easy in theory and saying it out loud but it's not as easy as a lot of other youtubers make it sound like getting somebody back in a week or getting i love your real mm -hmm. when you, you said get your person back in uh, one second or less or something and you like <laughs> like I thought that was hilarious and um but it's it's not this manifesting stuff is not as easy as that and so yeah. I think if you want to manifest contacts from a person more consistently I think you need to go to an end scene where that's what you're getting you're simply just getting contact and you can do that by manifesting in steps so instead of going to the end of you being in a relationship with your person Something that I did when I was manifesting in SP was I manifested first getting the text message. Mm. I got the text message. I next My next living in the end scene was, okay, now I'm going to see this person. And mm. then after I go see this person, my next step was, okay, now we're going to go out. And then after that, my next step was, okay, my next living in the end scene was, okay, now we're going to spend the night. You know, like it's okay to manifest in steps. You can play with the middle. And so if you're not getting contact consistently, I would recommend you playing with the middle and creating an end scene that implies you're getting more contact. Like, oh, telling a friend, for instance, oh, you wouldn't believe uh, such and such texted me again for the third day in a row. 
You know what I mean? Oh, you wouldn't believe. Like, we actually, I've actually talked to him or her a lot this week. You know, creating in scenes like that. Don't go straight. Yes. Because you're, you're not, your imagination and your will are, are at, at war. You know what I mean? And Emil Quay, a lot of people don't know who Emil Quay is, but he was before Neville. And he was the guy that talked about auto-suggestion, which is basically affirmations. And he always said, when your imagination and will are at war, he was like, your imagination will win every time. You cannot will something with affirmations a lot of times, which is why saying a bunch of affirmations a lot of times don't work with people. Mm. It's because their imagine your imagination will always triumph over your will, no matter how hard you try to will something into existence. So yes. This is this is this is something that I would say, like, I guess one of the things I recommend to the viewers is to mess with the middle, create an end scene that you realistically could see happening within the next 30 days of getting consistent contact from your person. Yeah. I'm so glad you brought this up because it's like I've had conversations one on one with people about this. But I don't think we've ever discussed it like in a single video or a discussion like this, but I agree. You can't go from you haven't seen your specific person for like two years to imagining getting married. Your head will never believe that. It's like you've got to stretch yourself and your believability somewhat, but not to the point where it snaps. And like what you did going from no contact to a text message, that's a manifestation in its own right. Then it builds confidence to go, okay, now let me see if I can um, see them once uh, every couple of weeks. And then once that happens then you go, well, hang on, let me see if we can see each other once a week now. And you build up your manifesting muscle by doing smaller jumps, I think. It's not that you can't try but I've yet to meet someone that can really go from, I haven't seen someone for two years to let's get married and go for a, an amazing honeymoon in the Bahamas. You know, like that's, <laughs> for most people, that's too big of a jump. And if that's you and you're watching this, it's nothing wrong with you. I mean, right. I'm so glad, so funny that you're talking about it because the, I've always done the, the incremental jumps and I've manifested some wonderful things. So there's no way I could have gone from, I'm working a job to I'm working remotely earning six figures a year and being able to go from A to B to C and to be free. I'd always had a job. So I had to go, let me manifest one trip that's fully paid and that I can believe that I can do that. I can go from, from Sydney, Australia to London, England. I can do that. I can do one trip because that'll cost me about, $2,000 $2,000 and then I just got to work out where I'm going to stay and if I stay for two weeks that might be another $1,000 so we're looking at about $1,000 whether I'm in Sydney or London I still have to pay food I still have to pay you know the general stuff I need for the day so that part's not going to change but it was like $3,000 was a heck of a lot easier to imagine than going okay if I do four trips in a year which was where I jumped to for the next level. I now have to do four trips in a year, fully paid. And I mean, if you look at that 3,000 times four, that's $12,000. At that time, $12,000 was a huge amount of money that I didn't think I could manifest in one hit. So it's like the doing it, and I did, I did four trips in one year and I did them one at a time and I had Mm. doubt each time and I had, oh my goodness, how can I imagine this and be consistent and all these things? And of course, as many know, this was connected to my SP being in London. So it was money, it was being free, it was having enough time off work and it was believing that it was not that big a jump to get across the pond, as they say, from Australia to England. So, but once I'd done it once, it was like, okay, I've got a little bit more oomph to be able to imagine the next one and to be able to leave work and to be able to know I could float without, you know, um, well, a, a salary from a job, you know, because right. I went from having the employee hat on to the, to the business owner hat and, and that was a jump, but it was all woven together and doing kind of having this pinpointed focus I used to call, and it's funny because I just found this in a diary today, energy darts. Like when you throw a dart and it's like, 
You know, you <laughs> throw the energy dart and the energy dart was one trip for one month at $3,000. There was, and spend time with my guy. So having, again, to the topic we're talking about, more regular contact. So it's like when you throw your energy dart, do it on a little plateau and then jump up to the next one. And I think when you do that, the confidence builds naturally because you saw a little result or a medium result. And as you get more contact with someone, you then go, okay, well, I've managed to get to this. Now I'm going to imagine going out on a date or having a, let's go on a weekend away, not a long holiday for two weeks yet. That's too big a jump, but let me, let me go for two nights with this, this next, this person. Let's go to some place that's three hours away from where we live. We can drive there and we can spend the weekend together. So going from that, I see them once every two weeks or once a week to then having a weekend away that's not a big deal. That's kind of the natural progression. So I so agree with you on this and I'm so glad you brought it up because I think for people listening that are really struggling to just jump to the end of this astronomically big desire from where you're standing, it's, I mean, it might not be huge, but from where you're standing today, it feels huge. So hopefully it will make things easier for people that they can do that incremental. And you know what? There's so many taglines and things about what Neville says and what this person says and what that person says, each to their own. But I agree with you, mess with the middle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Messing, so, messing with- yeah, yeah. Mess with the middle in a nice way. Fertilize it with love and with believability that you don't jump so far that you can have, your believability will stretch enough, far enough that that will happen. I want to add too, if you want more contact, stop trying to get love and learn to be in a loving state. And then when you see the person, communicate with the person, you're not coming from that place of need, getting, I'm not getting enough, I want more, I'm dissatisfied. Because all of that, it just pushes that person in an opposite direction to you. Mm. That's powerful. That's, that's beautifully said. Um, I think embodying, I think we get so caught up in like living in the end a lot of times that we forget to actually embody certain things throughout the days. Um, Mm. And so to add to that, I would embody that feeling of, you know, like, like Greg Braden, I posted a video recently about Greg Braden and talking about the gospel of Thomas and, you know, the lost words of Jesus. And basically what I wanted to say was like, he speaks of marrying thought with emotion. Mm. And I think a lot of times, like we have one, but don't have the other or we don't have any of them, right? So we have the thought of getting contact from a specific person consistently, but we are missing the emotion. Mm. And so without the emotion, it really can't come into fruition, you know, and it, it, and it will eventually, but it's probably gonna take a long time if you just try to go through it with your thoughts. Because like he says, you, the two need to marry, and then you mm. said the mountain move, you know, and the mountain must move. And so what would that feel like getting consistent contact from a person, you know, embody that feeling? What would it feel like to be loved Yeah. Um, by yourself, first and foremost? Because as, you know, books like the Bible says, you know, seek ye first the kingdom and then all else will follow, yeah. right? So this is the same thing Neville is saying about, self-concept so if you if you don't want to look at it in biblical terms and say seek you first the kingdom and then all else will follow just switch kingdom with self-love so seek you first self-love then everything else will follow or seek you first self-concept mm. and everything else will follow because a lot of the stuff that we're going through is pretty much uh, a lack of 
self-concept, a lack of self-love, which Agnes has been preaching religiously, you know what I mean, <laughs> on YouTube for I don't know how long now, you know what I mean, a long time. Like she's the mm -hmm. godmother of self-love in this, in this YouTube space because I don't really hear a lot of people talking about it the way that she's talking about it, you know. I hear people talk about self-love on YouTube, but they're talking about self-love from from an arrogant perspective. Like a lot of um, a lot of this LOA stuff that I see now is is becoming extremely narcissistic, and um, and even just like other advice, like worldly advice, is becoming extremely narcissistic. So when Anya speaks of self love and manifesting, it's not from a place of, you know, it's all about you in an unhealthy way, but in a healthy way. You know what I mean? And so I don't want I don't I don't want the viewers to get confused about. When Anya says, oh, self-love, you know, and worried about yourself, like, don't do not do that in a selfish way. Do it in a way that is going to be beneficial to yourself, definitely, but also beneficial to other people. And mm -hmm. I also wanted to touch on another thing that uh, Greg had talked about, and that was taken out of the text years ago and edited, which was, when you ask, ask without hidden motives. That was another, that was another key point that I got. And so... When you're asking for these things, contact from a person, more contact from a person, whatever it may be, a lot of times you guys are asking in one of these things, but there's hidden motives behind your asking. And so that may also block whatever it is that you're trying to draw in. Because I always tell people, you can lie to yourself, right? You, you can try to lie to yourself, but you can't lie to the universe. You can't lie like mm. the universe created us right like we it knows your vibration at all times you can try to lie to yourself and tell yourself mm. you know you're you're this or you're, whatever affirmations you say to yourself on repetition you know but the universe you know like you can't bs the universe you know what yeah I mean? so marvin what do you what do you um see as the hidden motives what what types of hidden motives so like, say, for instance, somebody like we're talking about manifesting contact from a specific person, right? Yeah. Why the why do you really want to manifest contact from that person? What are the hidden motives behind that? Yeah. Like, do do you is the hidden motive that you really want to get them back for you just so you can say to people, oh, I'm right. I knew I could do it from an ego standpoint. Or is it you really want to manifest that person back out of pure love. And okay. I think a lot of times the hidden motive is a lot of times we manifest things, we're manifesting from the ego and we're not manifesting from our pure higher self, which is why a lot of times people manifest things and they get it and they're not happy. They think like, oh, once I get this, I'm going to be satisfied. I'm going to be fulfilled. Once I get more contact or once I get X, Y, and Z from mm. this specific person or from this job or from whatever, I'm going to be happy. I'm going to be fulfilled. But then they get it mm. and they're not happy. And why is because your mm. motives, in my opinion, weren't right. They were, it was hidden. It was hidden intentions. And, uh, it, and Florence talks about this. You know what I mean? Florence, all, yes. Florence she talks about stuff like this. She just words it differently, but she always talks about getting stuff um, with the will and things being ill gotten. Ill gotten. And, yes. Yeah, yeah. And that sort of thing. Right. Yeah. Oh, well, it really is. There's so many levels to it. Where is my desire coming from? And is it coming from a place? Well, the one I see a lot is it, is it coming from a place of need or is it coming from a place of genuine love and wanting to be with somebody? And, you know, a lot of the SP topic, people come because they're in pain, because they've got a broken heart, because they've been left for a third party or just the person disappearing, ghosting them. There's many, many reasons why people lose their SP and they kind of back out. So mm -hmm. it's um, being honest with yourself, okay, what's going on within me? And then how, if that's in front of me, what have I got to work on? And then you make the effort to work on the self-love, clear the inner child, use EFT, you know, there's, there's EMDR, there's inner child work, there's family of origin work, there's all sorts of different things that people specialise in to help you, the work of Brandon Bays, the journey that she talks about. 
and Shelly and Morty Lefko that do all the belief work. So there's lots at your fingertips that you can use to definitely clear a lot of your old stuff so that you can have more contact, which is in the end, you, you learn to stop repelling the other person because of your need, because of your, I'd like you to make me happy or whatever, which a lot of us start there, but it's the journey of learning how to be in a state of unconditional love towards that person. And that's, the lesson they teach us they're a great teacher in unconditional love so hopefully you will be on your journey somewhere in regards to what Marvin and I talked about and um, feel free to ask questions down below if you want something specific answered in regards to the topic of more contact and we are going to go into topic number two for this video which is the topic of if you have attracted a third party. So Marvin, if someone comes to you and says, hey, I was having a pretty good relationship and now I found out just out of the blue there's a third party involved, what would you start with by explaining and sharing with that person who's probably in quite a bit of pain and suffering at that moment? Well, what I would say to myself is and a lot of people don't like like hearing it is one of the biggest lessons I feel like Eloise taught us or taught me specifically and what I would hope that it would teach everybody is to um look within it yourself mm. you know look look within look pay attention to as Neville says everyone is you pushed out um I think one of the biggest things that I see and people is people don't realize a lot of times the mistakes that they personally make in relationships. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a lot of deflecting I see nowadays. And what I challenge anybody to say, to look at rather, is there's always warning signs, right? So mm -hmm. a lot of times these things don't just happen out of nowhere. Yes. Um, you think it happens out of nowhere and maybe that's just you mm -hmm. being naive. Or, but a lot of times, in my opinion, like third parties don't just come out of nowhere. Or somebody doing something, something doesn't come, doesn't happen out of nowhere. Like in the beginning, you might have known who that person was. You might have attracted somebody that was a certain way. And you might have thought you could change them, but you didn't change them. And they ended up cheating on you, you know, or getting a third party or whatever the case may be, because you thought, you know, your ego told you, oh, I'm so good. I, I can change this person. And I know a lot of people have that issue. They think, oh, my love is this. And, you know, this person is going to change for me and I can get them to change and blah, 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 blah. So it's like when these situations happen, like a third party comes in, it's like I have a hard time believing a lot of times like it just randomly happens. Like you either knew who the person was and you still chose to deal with them. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? And and I and I can speak personally to this because I've had a situation in business where things happen, but then I look back at myself and I held myself accountable and I said, Marv, you can't even be mad because you knew who this person was. Like you mm. saw them, you saw this person do certain things in business. Yeah. So you chose to still deal with that even though you saw that. So then when it got done to me, it's like, I can't be a victim. You know what I mean? Yes. Like it's, it's, and so it takes a level of honesty like that when you're yes. third parties and stuff yeah. To look in the mirror and be like, no, you know what? Actually, I saw who this person was. And if this third party comes in, it is it, I really can't say anything. And also, too, looking at yourself in the mirror with a third party, what did I do that could have possibly caused the third party to come into the picture? Mm, that's a good I, question. In, yeah. in, in the 3D, as people like to use terms 3D, in the 3D world, was I being hard-headed was I not listening was I worried more about myself than my partner did I always have to have it my way mm. you know? so if you're in the 3d acting this way from a selfish perspective you know what I mean and then all of a sudden a third party comes up like don't be surprised your person might have been like yo you I didn't like the way you were acting this person over here is treating me way better than you're treating me this person over yeah. here is not argumentative you're argumentative this person yes. over here. And it goes back to like, the everyone is you pushed out. You know, yeah. so if you don't like yourself or if you have problems within yourself, 
you're most likely going to attract somebody who's going to reflect that back to you. Mm -hmm. And you're most likely going to attract the third party situation. And this realization that we're talking about right now, in my opinion, is the first step to healing along with the second step. And, and this is situation case by case. I think if you really want to get rid of a third party, and this is probably one of the hardest things to do, you have to, you have to, again, this is situation by situation. It's nuanced, but I believe you, a person has to take the third party off the hook. Mm. Meaning, meaning you have to release any bitterness, resentment, et cetera, that you have towards that third party, which is, I understand one of the hardest things to do, but holding on yeah. to that is just keeping that third party around even longer and giving them yes. out. So these first two things that I said, I this is something that I think is is a must. Yeah, I agree because it's such an atomic bomb that lands in your lap. And of course you're gonna go through you know, you're going to go through that period of shock when you first find out about it. And of course your head's reeling and you can't eat, you can't sleep and all of that. That's right. normal. But once you get kind of used to the information and then you go, okay, hang on. What was I doing in the relationship to push this person away and to go on to someone else? If you can ask yourself that and the argumentative thing, that word comes up again and again in conversations about this topic. It's I was argumentative. I was, and, and, and the answer, and when I asked the question, what were you being argumentative about? I would say eight times out of 10, it's I wanted to, them to spend more time with me. I wanted them to give me more attention. I was looking for reassurance. I was um, wanting to be more important than their job. Um, or whatever it was and and not understanding that a job when you're at a job that job has to come first mm. because if you don't earn money you can't pay your bills if you can't pay your bills you can't be in a relationship because you don't can't don't have a house or anywhere to stay at so <laughs> you have to put a job first you don't necessarily have to put your family first or I think kids have to come first if you're a parent and I think a job has to come first but if you can understand that being third in that list is still extremely good, if someone's got kids and a job and they're putting you next in line, that's actually a real gift they've given you because you are the third thing that's important to them after two things that they can't live without. So you go, okay, I'm going to see how I can be understanding rather than look to be understood and I'm going to look to see how I can give to the situation by not being argumentative so that when we do spend time together and I'm I've got to let go of you're not giving me enough I'm dissatisfied you're not giving me enough I'm dissatisfied because people get very tired of that very quickly if you are doing that and that comes from your unmet needs in childhood it rarely has anything to do with the person in front of you. So it's like if you can do some inner child work and you can go, you know what? I'm going to be what this person gives is enough. What they give is enough. What they give is enough. Oh, it's so good to see you. I'm so glad we've got today. Oh, you know, I've only got a few hours. That's okay. Two hours is great. Let's enjoy the time we have and let's have a good time. Instead of, oh, what's the point in seeing each other for just two hours? If you're going to just give two hours, I, I, you know, what's the point? And you've got to stop doing those sorts of dialogue and looking at the glass half empty and not enough, not enough, not enough. And the more you're grateful for what's given, the more it can unfold that you end up spending more time together and that you don't attract a third party because you haven't been argumentative, you haven't been um repelling the other person with your unquenchable thirst which really does not come from them and what they're doing but comes from you and your inadequacy which comes from childhood and your unmet needs from those two people that raised you usually your parents but sometimes people didn't have parents they had somebody else looking after them so it's fascinating once you understand this because you can focus. I mean, I've had third parties in every relationship except for this one, but I was thinking I'm second best as a belief I couldn't get rid of. So, of course, if I think that, then that's what I was getting over and over and over. So 
I don't have that issue anymore. That tells you you can get rid of it because I haven't had that issue for about 12, 13 years. And, you know, of course I'm going to attract a third party if I'm feeling not good enough and inadequate and then looking to the other person like they're too good for you or more important than you. And it's like no one's better or less. It's like we're all on equal footing. And But it's what you think about yourself that then is the law of projection reflecting back to you what you really believe. Like you said, you can fool yourself, but you can't fool the universe. And, you know, I think that it, it's once you understand that self-love is the basis to correct a third-party situation and your lack of self-love is often what got you there. I'm not going to say every time, but a lot of the time third-party situations do occur because people are too demanding, want too much, and are, and are trying to get more and more and more external love and that person gets exhausted and wants to get away, then you go, okay, this is what I have to work on is my self-love, but not just for the relationship to refuel and rekindle itself, but for me to feel good from the morning till the time I go to bed so that I move through comfortably in a relaxed, loving state. Mm. Well said, well said. And and to add to that, I think that um, Agnes is one of the very few people, if any, I don't know if I haven't seen any recently talk about um, Ho'oponopono. And I think Agnes, I think Ho'oponopono is something that I recommend anybody do if they're in a third party situation, because, you know, you always hear in ancient texts, whether it's the Bible, whatever, you know, you always hear people talk about forgiveness and forgiveness is something that we have to have in life in order to get through life. You don't want to be carrying around this weight on your chest because you don't want to forgive somebody. Um, now, I understand there are certain things that are unforgivable, and I totally understand that. And so, you know, I'm not speaking to those things, but there are certain things that I'm speaking to where it's like a lot of us, we hold grudges or are mad for things that can easily be resolved. And um, like I said, Ho'oponopono is one of those things that I would definitely recommend to add to your practice in forgiving yourself forgiving mm. whoever whoever this person is that you want to get more contact from um and as well as the specific person because i mean the third party because what you guys got to understand is the third party a lot of times and i'm not saying all the times a lot of times the third party is the innocent one if you got if you guys think about it like the third party a lot of times and i'm not saying all the time because there are times where third parties know that you're in a relationship with said person and they try to do something devious you know that does happen i'm not talking about those situations I'm talking about there are some third party situations out here where the third party literally has no idea that you even exist, <laughs> had no idea yeah. that that the person that you're you, the person that they hooked up with was in a relationship with you. You know what I mean? So you're mad at the third party and the third party was just an innocent bystander that just so-called happened to see your person wherever they met, wherever. And then some things happen and then you're mad at them, but you shouldn't even be mad at them. So a lot of times you have resentment towards a person that doesn't even know you're alive. Because mm. you know they're alive but they don't even know you're alive you know what i mean yes and so yes. this is why forgiving the third party a lot of times is important because you're you're angry at somebody who doesn't know you exist like think about how how like funny that sounds like it's 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 not really their fault if i can understand you being mad at your whoever your person is because they know yes yes you know what i'm saying they know but the third party is like so that's why I really encourage you guys to for, for, forgive the third party. As long, I know it's going to take long for a lot of you. I know it's going to take a long time, but eventually you will get there because if Agnes can get to that point, you know, because mm. she shared her story on, you know, her channel so many times and shared with the world. Yeah. And so if she can get to that point and other people that have gone through way worse situations than myself or Agnes, um, then you guys can get to the point to where you can forgive, you know, the third party, forgive yourself for dealing with X, Y, and Z, and even forgive mm -hmm. your specific person in order to move on. And also, like Agnes was saying earlier, spending more time and all that type of stuff, understanding that finding happiness within yourself, you know, happiness is an inside job, you know, happiness is an inside job, mm -hmm. self-love is an inside job. Don't assign that to anybody else. And what happens mm -hmm. when people get into relationships a lot of times, which is why third parties come in, 
is you're assigning your 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 person, whoever that is, you're assigning them the job to make you happy 24 seven to make to love you 24 seven to wait on you hand and foot 24 seven. And that's not fair to them. And like Agnes was saying, they feel that energy. And so they pull away. And what happens then, you know, polarity kicks in and then somebody else comes in the picture that they attract that is doing what you're not doing. You know what I mean? And so that's where the third party comes into. And so that's why I encourage you guys also to don't look for happiness outside of yourself. Don't look for love outside of yourself. You know, it's all within. Find something. Yeah. Wake up and decide to be happy. Wake up and decide to be loved. Don't wake up and say, oh, if I don't get a text message today from my person, I'm not going to be happy. You've already lost yeah. the day. You've already lost the day if you wake up with that mentality. Oh, I'm not going to be happy today if I don't get a call. Oh, I'm not going to be happy today if I don't get a text. Oh, I'm not going to be happy yeah. if I don't get consistent contact. You're you're giving your power away. Don't ever do that again. Yes. Yes. And I think, too, it's that thing of if you can remember, because I know when I was stuck in those situations and I found out about a third party, it's like I, w I would. I would hate them. You know, you just hate them. Yeah. What have, and it would make you feel the inadequacy of what have they got that I don't. And But really, now that I'm years down the track and I'm looking back at myself, when you first meet someone, you're happy, you're free, you're playful, you're enjoying yourself, you're, you're, you don't really have any self-consciousness because you've got yourself there over time, um, usually after another heartbreak or something, and it's a year or two or what some people can do it in six months. But <laughs> it's like once you understand that the reason someone left might have had something to do with and in my case, this was definitely true, that I'd lost my playfulness, I'd lost my joy, my fun, my free, you know, self, and I was fixating on them giving me love and then they weren't giving enough so I'd get, you know, forlorn, um, passive aggressive, start the arguments, why aren't you spending weekends with me, why aren't you doing this, why aren't you doing that? So the other person just feels constantly, no matter what I give, it's never good enough, no matter what I give, it's never good enough. And it's like once you look at all that, the forgiveness is not for others. The forgiveness is for you to forgive yourself because you didn't know the information that was causing you your own suffering. Mm. And that it's easier to forgive the self because you're the one that's lived this. You're the one that's been on the inside of you while all this stuff's been happening. So you can naturally most easily, more easily have compassion for the self for your inability to make a relationship work because you didn't know the rules of engagement. Beautiful. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know what to say to that. That's, I was zoned out. I was like, yeah, she's preaching right now. Oh, God. Let the congregation say amen. <laughs> amen, Sister uh, Vivarelli. Wow. Well. It's a good topic, isn't it? Because it's like all the pieces fit together and they all boil down to me, my energy, my, how I feel, what are my expectations, what are my, you know. Years ago someone said one thing to me and it was one of the best sentences I've ever heard in my life. No one owes you anything. Mm especially in relationships was the bit I added on because that's where I would have huge expectations as I got to be with somebody. So yeah. it's like when you go, you know what, even when I'm in relationship for a month, for six months, for a year, for 10 years, even that person doesn't owe me anything. Mm. Wow. Give them that as a gift for Christmas. Give them that as a gift for the new year. Give them that as a gift for Valentine's day. Give them that as a gift for their birthday. You don't owe me anything, and whatever you do, I'm going to be grateful for what you do give. Wow, what a gift you give somebody! I I enjoy that. I really really like that. Yeah, it's a it's a relationship maturity is what that is. That that is, and you know you know what that yeah. also reminds me of. That reminds me of real quick, um, unconditional love. Yes, like, a lot of people. Yes. A lot of people talking about this in third parties and a lot of people are doing things from an un from a conditional standpoint. Mm. You know, it really is like we, we hear the term unconditional love. In my opinion, mm. with most of us on this planet, there really is no such thing as unconditional love. Like no. every, 
pretty much everybody's doing something with conditions. And so what happens a lot of times is people, somebody will do something, not from the kindness of their heart in relationships, they'll do something because they want to get something mm. from somebody. Like you always use the term on yes, trying to get, trying to get, yes. get, get, get. And so people do things in relationships a lot of times because they're trying to get. Mm. And your person can feel that energy eventually. If they don't feel it now, they eventually will. And yeah. so what you just said reminded me of like, when you do something for whoever your partner is, a lot of times you're self-sabotaging yourself because you're only doing that thing because you're expecting them to reciprocate it. Yeah. You're, and when they don't reciprocate it, now you feel a type of way. When maybe they're not reciprocating it, they're not doing it intentionally. It's just not how they think or how they operate in that realm. Like they're not doing, but you're taking it as an insult because- oh. You're thinking about yourself. You're thinking, well, I mopped the floor for you or I took you to dinner. Why didn't you take me to dinner? And it's like, this is where the arguments come in. This is where the third party come in. And so it's yeah. like, if you're going to take somebody to dinner, take them to dinner, but don't expect. And I had a, and I had a, I had a one-on-one with a client about this. And I said, I told, I told them in a weird way, you have to drop the expectation. You have to have expectations but drop the expectations in, in like in like a weird way, meaning like, yes, don't expect like if you take somebody out to dinner or do something nice for a person, don't have expectations to be like, oh, you got to do it for me like a month later now or a week later now. You know what I mean? Because then if they don't, now you're having those inner conversations as we talk about with Neville and stuff, you're having those inner conversations. Mm -hmm of, oh, well, I did this for them and they didn't do this for me. And da, 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 da. Mm. you start working with yourself in your head and you're holding it in. And now you're building resentment because you're doing all these nice things and they're not reciprocating it back. And, mm. but it's like, yo, just do it. Just do it for love. Don't expect anything back. And the crazy thing is, is when you do stuff, just like me, for instance, when I give, if I give somebody money or something, if I do anything for somebody, I don't expect anything back. Yeah. You know what's crazy? I always get something back. Yes whether it's from that person or the universe gives it to me somewhere else, like I always get it back. But that's because I don't expect it. I'm really doing it from a place of here, just take this, have this. Like, yeah. don't, I don't need it. I don't want it back. I'm not expecting you to give it back to me. Yes, that's great. And it's such a, um, no matter how long you've been in relationship, if you can apply that, no one owes me anything. Um, that's when people do things for you on a regular basis, you know, 100%. I mean, I have, I have that in my relationship. I mean, my, um, my partner and I were both born a week apart. So we celebrate oh, cool. our birthdays <laughs> together. That's nice. And, and um, a few days ago, he said to me, right, I'm block, block off the whole day. I'm taking you out. He said, just wear this. Cause he knew what types of activities we were going to do. And he had a day planned of, things that we had, places we'd been to, um, things that we had done over the 10 years, 12 years that we, when we first met. And it was so much fun and it was such a loving, thoughtful thing to do. And we were gone. He said, okay, you know, we can sleep in and then we'll have a shower around lunchtime. And he said, we'll get going by about one o'clock in the afternoon and then we're going to be out till midnight. So I see, gee, 12 hours worth of stuff. What the heck's he got planned? But it was this thing that I don't mind if someone forgets my birthday. I don't mind if someone gives something or doesn't give something it's i'm not i'm not attached to valentine's day or my birthday or right. christmas or i mean i don't really celebrate you know anything to the letter because yeah, i didn't grow up yeah so yeah. It, it's like you don't have all those things kind of locked into your consciousness but i think if you can remember even on those days no one owes me anything that Honestly, it is the most freeing thing. And anything that comes is like, oh, that's a bonus. Right. And that feeling of gratitude and humility is such a beautiful thing to give others that there wasn't this expectation. I heard someone get a present and it was an expensive present from their husband. And the woman said, oh, no, I don't like that at all and it was a piece of jewelry and it was expensive like we're talking thousands of dollars over twenty five thousand dollars 
Mm. And I remember thinking, wow, the thing I'm confused about is how did that person who's so ungrateful attract that person to give them something? That part, that part I didn't understand. But there was some level of expectation and um, believability that attracted that. But I think it came from entitlement, not from self-love in that particular case. I agree. It makes so, sense. Yeah. So if you can free yourself no one owes me anything and you can get your foot off the back of their neck energetically and you can practice getting into a state of love and radiating it out. I can tell you that solves both of these topics that we have talked about today, which is attracting more contact and that you don't end up in a third party situation. Or if you do end up in one, you can focus your way out of it pretty quickly by by relaxing, going into humility. Don't go on the defense attack. Acknowledge what you've had going on and focus your way out of it through, I mustn't have been in a state of love enough. Now let me radiate love out. Let me practice having good thoughts towards people and let me unhook myself from this situation. And you will find if you practice that and make that the priority. I mean, these days, I know I've done some of those meditations for rubbing out the third party and all of that like seven years ago six years ago i personally wouldn't do those anymore i don't think right. that's the way to go i think going the self-love route and building yourself up rather than trying to remove someone else i think that's time better spent i couldn't agree more i think you're spot on it's all self-love will self-concept will take care of and it's funny yeah. i just did a video recently on narcissism somebody asked me a question ah. somebody asked me a question about narcissists and stuff like that and I basically kind of said the same thing like somebody who has a really good self-concept isn't going to attract the narcissist most likely isn't going to attract people like that somebody that has a yeah. weak self-concept and it's the same thing with third parties you yeah. know what I mean third parties like yeah. somebody that has a really great self-concept self-love like you say about themselves is not going mm. to attract a third party you know they're going to attract mm. something that is really really good really really works for them and all of the above. So self-love, mm. self-concept is definitely the answer. Yeah, for sure. Actually, Marvin, I'll, if you send me the link to that narcissistic video you did, um, I'll put it down below for people to have a look at. And I've got a narcissism playlist. So I know that it's a topic that's been floating around a bit lately. So nice. if you need more information on that, people that are watching this and you've made it we'll this far, it. we will um, share that with you down below. So. Marvin, any last words before we shoot off? No last words. I think we got them <laughs> all in, in this video. So they got to just go back and rewatch. <laughs> yeah. Go back, rinse, repeat the basics. You got to learn to redirect your mind. You got to deal with and clear your old emotions. And then you got to learn to radiate love and give it out rather than looking to get it and seek it. I'm going to put down below the playlist for first best, second best, and there's another playlist, Getting Versus Giving, the narcissism one. And Marvin and I have done many quirky, weird, and wonderful discussions over the years. I'm going to put that whole playlist down below for you if you want to go back and look at some total nuttiness and kookiness over the years that we have enjoyed together. So... Lots of love, everyone, and we will look at your questions down below when you pop them down there. And Marvin, stay on, and we'll say goodbye in private. Bye, everyone.